Hello, in this video we'll continue to see a system with base excitation. We've seen before what this uh, curve here, the transmissibility of uh, displacement, looks like when we vary the frequency ratio R. In this video we're going to see what the damping factor does to this curve. So I'm going to take this uh, script that we had in the previous video and add a variation here of the damping coefficient as well. So that's what I have here on this new script. I'm going to change this damping coefficient from uh, a value of 10 to 100 in increments of 10. So we're going to have 10 different curves here for these different uh, damping coefficients. And we're going to do that in the same uh, range of uh, excitation frequencies. So we're going to use that uh, structure we've seen before. We're going to use a for loop here and as we change the damping I need to update the damping factor and, the, uh, and calculate again the transmissibility curve. And I'm going to plot all these curves one on top of the other. So take a moment now if you want to pause the video to have this script copied into your octave. So I'm going to go ahead and run this uh, script to see what this curve looks like. And here it is. So we, sh we had before um, a curve that was around here for um, damping of uh, 20. And we see as we vary the damping, uh, what we change is the amplitude of this um, of our motion and obviously here relative to the amplitude of the base which is given by this transmissibility curve. So for lower damping our transmissibility will be higher and that means that our peak here around uh, frequency ratio of 1, our resonance peak, will be higher for lower damping and lower for higher damping. Uh, it's interesting to note here that even for the overdamped cases, the transmissibility is higher here before um, the the higher frequencies. As we've seen, there's a, a specific point here where these amplitudes start being lower or the transmissibility being lower than one, which means that the displacement of the block is smaller than the displacement of uh, the base. And that's uh, what gives us some isolation characteristic. And it's interesting to note that all the curves, regardless of the damping coefficient or the damping factor, they cross this uh, same point here. So depending, uh, so independent of the damping, uh, all the curves will be uh, will have transmissibility less than one for uh, frequency ratio greater than this value here. And we can see that this value, uh, we can see from this equation here, uh, that this value is exactly square root of 2. So I can show that by plotting a point right on square root of 2. Something like this. And we've seen that the uh, transmissibility at square root of 2 is exactly 1. So I can plot that as a red dot. I'll just make it bigger for just so we can see it better on the screen. So there you are. There's a point here right on the square root of two. And you can also turn on the grid, you see one point four something is our square root of two. So it's interesting that regardless of the damping, we will have a uh, transmissibility l higher than 1 for frequency ratio less than square root of 2 and transmissibility will be less than 1 for the frequency ratio greater than square root of 2. So when we take this transmissibility instead of the magnification curve, uh, Again, it gives us some uh, similar information regarding the the point where the resonance occurs, but now we see that there's this different information that there's, there's a specific point here from which we have lower amplitudes of the block in comparison to the 
amplitude of the bass. And that's very interesting to know if you want to have uh, an isolation of this um, amplitude of vibration on your system.